false prophet need to have a follower? None of them. Having them does fulfill scripture. Because Jesus says many false prophets shall come and shall deceive many. So they do have a role to play in biblical prophecy. But a false prophet is one of the worst human beings you can meet. When you think of it, I'd rather be bitten by a rattlesnake, stung by a scorpion, bitten again by a viper, because God can heal me from all of that. But a false prophet can ruin me in this life and the life to come. And all it takes is for me to believe one lie. Just one lie. That's scary when you think of it. Amen. This is why when we come out of religion, out of churches, out of falsehood that have doctrinized us. And if you go back and reevaluate a lot of your doctrinizing, it has nothing to do with Bible, but it is Bishop's ideology and bishops' personal feelings that you was more loyal to and not the Bible. Amen. So after you done took an overdose of bishop religious drugs, which made you spiritually violent against God's will, The church is nothing but a detox center. All of us are suffering from some form of religious hangover. Am I right, I say? Even though you're on the receiving end of hard, rough, tough teaching, if we go back and investigate ourselves deeply, there's still some residue. And many of us, may not be all, but many of us, Amen. where past teachings is still lingering. And we have to be detoxed. Byron, I'm glad to see you. I didn't know you was here until I saw that big grin. It's good to see you. Sister Carissa, I'm glad to see you too. Is Mother Ramsey here? Be sure you tell Mom I asked about her. To you that are watching, to all the first churches of our Lord Jesus Christ in the country of Malawi, and also Mozambique, especially Malawi, we sent some delegates over there, some ministers from America. I do hope that all of you, brothers and sisters, give the ministers your full cooperation. They're there at my request to investigate the necessary problems that has taken place. And I do hope and pray that all the ministers and members throughout all of their stops, whether it's in the country of Burundi, Malawi, Mozambique, that you be very cooperative. And then when the ministers come back with a thorough report to give to us, we will be flying, God willing, to the country of Malawi and Mozambique and Burundi. Thousands upon thousands have repented of their sins and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in all three countries Wonderful. and have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the work of the Lord is not, not just here in America. It's on every continent in the world today. And we're not flinching from this tough, rough message at all for nobody. I am notified constantly by preachers who say they want to walk up the truth, but I tell the preachers, if you have another agenda, if you don't want to have a job and go to work, if you're scared to roll up your sleeves and get dirty, you stay wherever you at and be lazy where you're at and go to hell from there. Otherwise, in that, this is hard work saving souls. 
People is not like cattle. It's much easier to raise cattle. It's hard when it comes to people. You will have some that are very cooperative. And you will have some that are just as rebellious as the devil out of hell. All right, last night here in Augusta, 54 was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> to all of my brothers and sisters that, that was here, that got baptized now, you make it your business to leave your church. You don't need to get baptized and then go back to your false church. No, what good is taking a bath and getting all clean and putting on your deodorant and perfume or cologne, then go out there and wallow in the mud? What did you do it for? What did you take a bath for? Amen. The Bible says, wash you, make you clean. Yes, Put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. Cease to do evil and learn to do well and seek judgment. Yes, so all of you that uh, were baptized here, we have a local temple, as Bishop Williams mentioned. It's 3441 uh, Milledgeville. Milledgeville Road here in Augusta, Georgia. 3441 Milledgeville Road. Services is every Sunday, beginning at 1030 in the morning, and also at 5 o'clock, or is it 5 o'clock in the evening or 4 o'clock? 4 o'clock every Sunday evening and 6 o'clock on Wednesday? Yeah, 6 o'clock on Wednesday. So leave your churches. If you're a pastor, I would love to talk to you about closing your church. <laughs> and if you want to keep it open, let me have a nice rap session with you about what you're preaching. Because the Bible said all that believe were separate. Were together. Oh, they were together. So I believe that God people should be one. I don't mean compromise to be one. I mean be one like the word of God requires. All right, let me give you an up to date on baptisms. Uh, this is one week, James. Yes, one week report. And to you that want to be baptized and was baptized last night, please forgive us of the slow pace. We had to follow the instructions <coughs> of how the hotel had things laid out. Only so many people was allowed in the baptismal area at, at the time. So we had to follow those instructions. They don't care how many gods we believe in or how much Holy Ghost you have. We had to follow those instructions, and I appreciate your cooperation. So as I mentioned, 54 last night, 20 in headquarters, four in New Brunswick, New Jersey, seven in Bronx, New York, one in Pine Bush, New York, three in Baltimore, Maryland, two in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, three in Raleigh, North Carolina, nine in Atlanta, 12 in Memphis, Tennessee, 14 in Monroe, Louisiana, one in Portsmouth, Virginia, three in Minnesota, three in Tallahassee, Florida, two in Jackson, Mississippi, three in San Antonio, Texas, four in Houston, 12 in Dallas, one in Portland, Oregon, one in Los Angeles, two in Cleveland, seven in Cincinnati, two in Dayton, Ohio, seven in Oklahoma, international baptisms, one in Birmingham, England, 13 in Jamaica, seven in Guyana, six in, is that Suriname? Suriname. And three in Trinidad, five in Grenada, a total of 204 souls in one week. So that's a blessing. Also, I want to remind all of our brothers and sisters that got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ two weeks ago in Valdosa, Georgia. As I mentioned, it was 108 so, or 185 souls in two days. Uh, we'll be starting a new church in Valdosa, Georgia. It'll be held at the Rainwater Conference Center, the same building where we held the meeting. But uh, it will be in the... Do you even have it on here? I know we'll be in the uh, Rainwater Conference Center. It'll begin on April 16th. Ah, there it is. Held in the Rose Garden Suite Hall. That's where the meeting will be held. All of you that are watching from the Valdosta, Georgia area, April 16th is the first service of the new First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ of Valdosta, Georgia. It'll be held April 16th. Service will be 11 o'clock and also again at 4 o'clock at the Rose Garden Suite. All are welcome. 
Leave your church. You got well, just about two more weeks to pack your robe up and get your hymn book. And uh, you preachers, you can leave your robe in your church or you can bring it and we can use it as baptismal clothes. <laughs> and that you may get yourself Bible right. To all of our ministers that are here and to the ministers internationally, we thank God for all of you that are part of the Truth of God family. This is the great move of God that is taking place, not just in America, but around the world. And I find that the devil is very angry, very, very angry, that God will think enough of his people to save them. Yes. And just like God thinks enough of his people to save them, the devil thinks enough of God's people to destroy them to keep them from being saved and from being right. That's it. Let us remember, it doesn't take a lot of effort to be destroyed. Amen. How many things did Adam do to get put out to God? One. How many? One. All you got to do is believe one lie. That one lie is a spot. You know, someone that iron their clothes, they want to get every wrinkle out. Some material is stubborn. So they may get a spray bottle and spray a mist at that wrinkle and then hit the button so the steam can come out. <sighs> they want to cast out that wrinkle. That's right. Then when they hold that garment up, they say, yeah, all right, it's, it's all right now. All right. Well, God is not allowing no wrinkles Enter the kingdom. That's right. And to get all the wrinkles out of us, you need a hard-pressed message. And God knows I don't mind using an iron on you. And a wrinkle is just when part of the material is out of place. That's all a wrinkle is. That's right. Evaluate yourself and see how much of yourself is out of place. And I guarantee there's a whole lot of us, if not all of us, I take that back, not a whole lot, all of us got something out of place in thought here. We got something out of place to where we feel here. Which is causing our temple, our body to act out of place here. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. All right, Williams, open your Bible anywhere. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Let's dive into it and take it apart and take our time and go to work and dissect the law of truth. That's right. All right, follow me. Ephesians chapter 5 and <coughs> verse 26. All right. That he might sanctify. No, 23. 23. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. What is it? For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh -oh. All right, you that got your phone on, I give you a chance to answer it. Maybe your pastor's calling you to come back to church. <laughs> Glory to God. Hear this now. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. What is it? For the husband is the head of the wife. The husband. In order to be the head, you can't be a henpeck. I despise henpeckism. That's right. Because the man is supposed to have the characteristics of God. Because man was made in God's image, not just in shape. It was made in God's image, shape, and character. And character. Man held the image, lost the character. That's right. That's what it meant. When God told Adam, the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. He said, the day you eat thereof. But notice when he ate, he still was living. That's right. But he said, the day you eat thereof, surely you shall surely die. So the question is, how did he die? Right. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. death. When he sinned, he immediately died. That's right. The whole characteristics of God changed in the performance of his temple, his house, his body. That's right. But he helped God shape and helped God form 
but his character changed. That's right. Examine yourself. Do you see that within yourself? Oh, yes. Because there's certainly in the world today among religions. Oh, yes. The name of Jesus is being exploited, misused, misused. played with, yes. tampered with. Amen. It is common to find the church today, church of the Lord Jesus Christ, church outside of the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> church under the Lord Jesus Christ, That's right. church of God, church of this, church of that, church of the other. That's right. The devil letting you know that he's right up there with you with the church name. For ye have perverted the words of the living God. Do you hear this? Jeremiah chapter 23 and at verse 36. Ye have perverted. Wait a minute. Hmm. Perversion and God. Get me. Don't mix. That's right. So imagine someone can... Do what to the word? Ye have perverted. Imagine someone can pervert That's right. God's word. God's word. How was that done? It's done by handling the word of God deceitfully. deceitfully. You can handle something clean and handle it dirty. That's right. Did you hear me? That's right. Something can be clean but yet handled Dirty. Dirty. Preacher's been doing it for years. Oh, yes. The word of God is infallible. The word of God is clean, flawless, but it's being handled dirty. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Listen at the brother Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and at verse 1. All right. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in, in craftiness nor handling, handling the word of God dece how? deceitfully. Hmm. Let's see the examples of the word of God being handled and a deceitful, mischievous, mischievous, undermining manner. That's right. In the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's make some examples. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, we'll add verse 19. Follow me. A feast is made for laughter. A feast made for laughter. And wine maketh merry. Wine made for merry. But money. But money. Answereth all things. That's one of those scriptures used in a perverse manner. That's right. Money answer for all things, and here, I'm going to throw this at you. Money answer for all things, and yet money don't buy all things. That's right. That's right. I uh, say, wait a minute, Pastor Jenner, that's my problem with you. you. The Bible say one thing and you say another. No, I'm not saying another. No. I want to enlarge on the statement. Money answereth all things. And yet you can't buy all things with money. That's right. In the book of Acts. Let me show you what you can't buy. Acts chapter 8 and we're at verse 17. Listen. Then laid they their hands on them. Then laid their hands, the apostles laid hands on them down in Samaria after they was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they received the Holy Ghost. And they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that when through Simon laying on of the apostles' the hands, on hand of the, apostles, the Holy Ghost was given. The Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. Simon offered money. And go back to the Old Testament chapter and verse and what they is that? Back in Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 19. Ecclesiastes 10 19 says, but money answereth all things. Money answer for how much? All things. How much? All things. How much? All things. Now let's go back to Act of the Apostle chapter 8 and see what this Simon offered the apostles. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles hands the Holy Ghost was given. What was it? He offered them money. He offered them money saying give me also this give, power. I want to buy some power. <laughs> that, that's right. I would like to purchase, purchase God. That's right. Who you think the Holy Ghost is? That's God. That's God. I would like to buy Jehovah. <laughs> That's right. I would like to buy the I am that I am. That's right. I would like to buy everlasting. That's right. I want to show you 
How perverse he was. How perverted. Listen. Saying, give me also this power. Give me also this power. That on whomsoever I lay hands. That whoever. I don't want the Holy Ghost. That's right. To receive it the way you did. Right. I want to take a shortcut and buy it. Buy it. That's right. The Holy Ghost is priceless. Amen. And if God cannot be bought, we that are God's people should have the characteristics of God that we should not be able to be bought. That's right. Especially if we already was purchased. Purchased. That's right. Glory to God because the scripture says you are bought with the price. With the price. With the price. Listen. Saying, give me also this power. Give me also this power. Give me this anointing. That on whomsoever, that I, whomsoever lay hands, I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. He may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto oh, him. Oh, man, that thing didn't sit right with Peter at all. That's right. Listen how Peter retaliated at old Simon the sorcerer. But Peter said unto him, thy money Your perish money with thee. will perish with thee. Why? Because thou you hast thought. Thought. That the gift of God, that God's gift, may be purchased may with money. May be bought with money. With money. Then now, what did Peter tell him? Thou hast neither part nor lot you, in this matter. You don't have no part, no lot. In other words, you ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. For thy heart is not right. What? Thy heart is not right. That's the condition of every preacher that make you believe that money is your connection to God. That's right. That's right. That's right. What is the condition of the heart? For thy heart is not right. I don't care how much money you have or don't have. That's right. God wants your heart to be right with him. That's it. That's why it's hard for a millionaire to walk with God. Yeah. He or she don't feel the need That's to right. want God because they feel as though they have everything. That's right. You can have all the houses and money and land under the sun. But uh, if you don't have God, you don't have anything. That's right. I'm laboring to pound this in the minds of creation. Amen. What did he say? For thy heart is not right. Your heart is not right. In the sight of God. In God's eyes. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee. Your money will perish with you. Because thou hast thought that the you gift of thought God. thought that God's gift. May be purchased may with be money. May be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Wait a minute. You don't have nothing to do with this? Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. What else? For thy heart is not right in the sight. Of what God. else? Repent. What? Repent. All you prosperity preachers, what you got to do? Repent. All you preachers that close your eyes and go in a fake tongue and say, the Lord says, if you give this and you give that, you will get it back one billion fold. What you got to do? Repent. Amen. All you heathens that's touching your flat screen. <laughs> that's right. Looking at some mega pervert. That's right. So you touch the screen and say y'all touch and agree. Amen. What you got to do? Repent. Why? Therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God. Repent of your wickedness and start praying. If perhaps the thought of thine heart. That the very thought that the way you think. May be forgiven thee. God may forgive the way you think because the Bible said the Holy Ghost thinketh no evil. No evil. For I perceive that thou art in the gall He's of bitterness. He's still not done laying them out. That's right. I perceive you in the gall of bitterness. Although we would say it this way you got some nerve. That's right. You got some nerve. I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. But the gall of bitterness is in these preachers. That's why they tell you, right. you that want a great blessing, get in this line. Yeah. The $10,000 line or the $50,000 line. Yeah. You that want another blessing. That's why some of you people, when these mega devils come to your city, your state, your country, yeah. you have to pay an X amount of dollars to sit close or a reasonable distance from the preacher. From the preacher. <clears throat> when I went to Jamaica... I was in Kingston, the capital, the rough part of Jamaica. Amen. And Jake's was there, I believe, a week before I got there. He wouldn't stay in Kingston, too rough for him. <laughs> and uh, when I got there, the auditorium was jam-packed. We had a few thousands there. And there were some people who came with newspapers, the Jamaican newspapers, showing the write-up. 
how Jacob's them was charging people who wanted to sit close to him. 5,000 a pop. My Lord. And those that set a reasonable distance, about 2,000 a pop. Mm. Can you imagine? My Lord. It's not like Jake's is the savior That's right. or the redeemer of nobody. That's right. But money have became... And don't misunderstand me. It takes money to function. That's right. Bills got to be paid. But money have been misused and misrepresented to make people believe that the more you give, the more God will do for you. In fact, it used to be a song they sang, you can't beat God given. The more you give, and the more he give to you. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> because if that was so, he said that the poor you have with you, always. 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 Suppose if you ain't got no money to give. That's right. The greatest offering you can give the Lord is you. Is you. Amen. You. Yes. That's right. So if they pass the offering pan around and you ain't got nothing to put in there, don't feel bad. You ever been to a church and they pass the offering pan around and the preacher stand like a vulture over a corpse? That's right. And if he don't have what he want or what he feels, what he feels though should be in there, right then he get in a spirit. That's right. He never have an anointing until it's money time. Yeah. That's right. He get in the spirit and right then right he then. start telling you the Lord said, that is not enough in this pot. That's right. The Lord said there's $5,000 or $10,000 more in the house. And the Lord said if you give it, you got a great blessing coming. That's right. These men lie on God with absolutely no conscience whatsoever. They are not afraid. They are not scared. They do it with ease. Oh, yes. That is the blessing plan. The plan is get your money. That's right. The blessing is... He have your money. He have it. That's right. What do you get in return? Everlasting hell. Amen. From being lied to and played with. Amen. Understand this, brothers and sisters. You have one soul. Amen. One. That's it. You can hop around from church to church, church to church, and go listen at preachers because you like them. Who cares because you like them? Amen. Amen. Many folk hate me because of the way I sound. If your house is on fire, <laughs> if your house is on fire, Amen. and uh, blazes of flames all around you, no fireman is going to yell nicely, Miss, there's flames all around you. <laughs> do, you do you really feel like coming out? You, Come on, it's hot up there. That's right. He's going to be waving, screaming, hollering. That's right. Why? Because he don't want to see your life perish. That's right. God told the preacher, cry loud. Cry loud. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Cry loud. Cry loud. 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 Then he said, spare, spare not. not. How loud do you want it, Lord? Lift, Lift up, up thy up voice. Your voice. Like a trumpet. As what? Like a trumpet. Hold it. Go ahead. Why not lift up your voice as a flute? Amen. <laughs> what is so significant about a trumpet? A trumpet. Sound of a trumpet is piercing. Oh, yeah. The sound of a trumpet is a wake-up call in military. That's right. The sound of a trumpet in military is time to assemble. That's right. The sound of a trumpet in military also death. Yes. A trumpet is used in all three categories. That's right. God's voice will sound like a trumpet when it's time to gather. For the Lord himself, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout. With what? With a shout. Hold it. In 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 16. I have to take it section by section and piece by piece. Because 
we've been taught shouting is no, that's holy dance. That's right. Shout with your mouth, you dance with your feet. That's right. That's not shout. That's not shout. Are you listening? Amen. The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With a shout. With the voice of the Talk archangel. About his sound that come from his mouth. That's right. His voice gonna sound like what? Of the archangel. It's giving different descriptions of the one voice. That's right. The first sound is gonna be what? That's heard. With a shout. With the voice of he's the archangel. He's going to shout, and it's going to sound like the voice of an archangel or a chief angel. And there is no angel more chief than God. That's right. What else? And with the trump of God. When I was little, I was taught that Gabriel going to blow a trumpet. <laughs> Amen. You ever heard that lie? Oh, yes. If Gabriel going to blow the trumpet, that's empowering the angels to be the resurrection. That's right. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. No angel is going to blow no horn no. to raise no dead. The Lord himself. Who doing it? The Lord himself. Know ye the Lord that he is God. That's right. Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus. So Jesus himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Glory to God. Amen. Shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of an archangel. And with the trump of God. The trump of God. And that sound is going to do what? And the dead in Christ shall rise first. He's calling for an assembly. That's right. That's why a trumpet is necessary. Necessary. It's a roundup call. That's right. It disturbs you when you sleep. If you're in a good sleep, brother, and someone starts blowing a trumpet, <laughs> I mean, they're blowing it. You may put your head under that pillar. You may get frustrated or you may yell, shut that noise up. That's right. <laughs> so God tell the preacher, lift up your voice. Like a trumpet. Make it loud, Make it strong, trumpet. piercing. <laughs> That's right. To do what? And show my people their transgression. Show them. Show them. He didn't say make friends with them. No, show my people their transgression. Show them. That's it. Show my people. Show them where they're wrong. That's right. That's and that's right. where the most preachers have failed. They failed to do that. They are afraid to show the world where they're wrong. Instead, they walk hand in hand with the world. That's right. Because they're afraid to be looked at as the odd one. That's right. Don't you know if you got a mind to walk with God, the Bible call you a peculiar people? Peculiar people. That's right. You're already going to be an odd fella and an odd sister. That's right. But if you walk hand in hand with the world until your darkness overtake your light, then the question is, as Jesus said, how great is your darkness? That's right. There got to be a difference, to be a difference. between holy and unholy, clean and unclean. That's right. All right, let's go back to the book of Ephesians where we were. Back in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 23. Follow me. For the husband is the head of the wife. Yes. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Uh -huh. And he is the savior of the body. Wait a minute. He is what? He is the savior of the body. Who's the savior of the body? And he is the savior. Read up above that. Even as Christ. As who? Christ. Even as Christ. What about Christ? Is the head of the church. And he, he is the savior of the body. We only got one savior. One savior. And God is that savior. That's right. And Christ is that savior. That's it. And we don't have two saviors. No, no. He is the savior of the, the body. keeper, the healer, the protector of the body of the church of his people. That's right. His bride. That's right. All right. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. As the church submits itself to Christ. So let the wives be, the, be to their own husbands. So the wives be to their own husbands in how much? In everything. That don't mean you got to sin for them. That's right. That's right. You don't have to sin for them. No. Amen. When that man try to forbid you from serving God, now it's a fight for soon. It's a fight. Because now you ain't going to stand between my relationship between me and God. No. That's worth fighting for. That's right. And that's worth keeping up a ruckus about. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15 and verse 20. Says what? He hath commanded no man to do wickedly. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly. Neither hath he given any man. Neither hath he given any man. License. A license. To sin. To sin. That's right. 
So no man got a license or got a right or got authority to keep your wife from wanting to be holy. That's right. So you got to balance out the scripture. That's right. Obey him in all things, all things. but... Neither has he given any man... But God having given man license, permission, or authority... To sin. Sin. <laughs> That's right. You see how the Bible harmonizes? That's right. So when that man tried to tell you, well, I'm the head and I'm the... All right, that's wonderful. Come on back to the Bible now and <laughs> see right. the information that you're giving her want her to sin. That's right. Until you lay ultimatums. If you don't do this, then we're going to go one way and we're going to go the other. No, 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 no. God first. That's it. Are you getting me? That's right. All right, come on, son. Back in Ephesians 5 and verse 24. What is it? Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, uh -huh. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Yes. Husbands, love husbands. your wives. Love your wife. Even as Christ also loved the church. That's, oh. To what degree? And gave himself for it. Hmm. You got to love her until you're willing to die for her. That's right. Something. Now, I know that many have a problem with that. <laughs> Some men saying now, Pastor Dennis, if you knew my wife, you wouldn't even die for it. <laughs> and some women saying the same thing, hmm, I ain't dying for that. She won't even say I ain't dying for him. That's She'll right. say, hmm, I ain't dying for that. That's right. Glory to God. <laughs> That's right. Come on, William. Husbands, love your wives. <laughs> Even as Christ also loved the church. And what? And gave himself for it. Why? That he might sanctify. Hold it. Before we can be clean. That's right. We have to be sanctified first. Sanctified. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody said, well, I thought cleanliness is what sanctify you. No. Sanctification first. First. For to be clean. That's right. To better understand it, if you wash clothes, you sanctify your clothes first. <laughs> Don't you do so? That's right. You separate your whites, you separate your colors, you sanctify them, you set each apart. That's right. For what? So they can be clean. That's right. Glory to God. That's you right. got to be set aside, set apart first so you can be clean. That's right. So when you make it up in your mind and in your heart that you want to be sanctified, sanctified. you have made up in your mind that you want to be separated yeah. from your former lifestyle right. that hinders you from being Clean. That's right. Sanctification first. Mm -hmm. Sanctification is simply prepping yourself. That's right. For the cleaning process. Yes, That's right. Yes, That's what the woman do, the man do. They separate their clothes. They sanctify their laundry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Prep them. Sometimes there are certain stains are more rough than others. Before they put them in the machine, put that detergent on it. Look at a husband's shirt. He don't have a ring around the collar. Some have an expressway around the collar. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Just, <laughs> just throwing it in the washing machine won't do it. No. So put that detergent on there. And then rub it. That's right. Because she don't want her husband going out looking any old type of way. Yeah. Because she represent him, he represent her. That's right. Making sure everything is pressed right, look right, all in place. That's it. That's not pride, that's clean. That's it. That's right. Now, I don't care how pressed your clothes are, how pressed is your life. That's it. You take your suit and dress it to the cleanest, fine. Now you got to bring your body to God's cleanness. That's right. Because it needs to be clean inside. Oh, yes. And need to be clean outside. That's right. There's a lot of stuff in us where the soap of the scriptures got to be used. That's it. That's right. That's right. 
Because many of our stains are long over the years. Have accumulated rough, hard. And a lot of times we try to resort to methods to get that thing out of us on our own. And it don't work when you do it your way. That's right. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 2. We got to use some soap, don't soap. we, William? Oh, yes. Let's get some Bible. Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 2. Follow me. But who may abide in the day of his coming? Who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? Who, glory to God, shall stand when he appear? For he is like a refined he, fire. He who? God. That's right. Is like a refiner's fire. Fire. And. And. Like fuller's soap. I have a soapy gospel. <laughs> That's Amen. right. Full of Holy Ghost suds. Suds. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That you may be thoroughly washed. That's it. It takes time. Oh, yeah. God is not washing nobody quickly. No, he's not. Nobody. Nobody. That's why this machine stays on. <laughs> That's right. All of you in the same machine. Oh, yeah. One church. One church. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Washed. That's right. Give me Isaiah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 116. 116. Isaiah. I want to take my time and soak you while we're in the laundry mat today. That's right. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16. What got to happen, Williams? Wash you. What? Wash you. For what reason? Make you clean. Wash you, make you clean, and when that happened, what's the result? Put away, Put the, away. the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Yes, got to wash you. Wash you. Now, the problem with the churches that many of you in, yeah. dry clean. <laughs> That's right. You got to be, when them clothes real dirty, they got to be tumbled around. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Put them in a wash machine, That's you right. got to tumble, <laughs> wash that thing, them clothes get tumbled around. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And then when the time to be rinsed, you see that water come out? Yeah. That water's all black, dirty. Oh, yeah. And sometimes that woman say, all right, I'll give it another go. Another go. Put some more detergent in there. She don't throw them in the dryer yet or hang them out on the line, the clothespin. I haven't seen clothes on the line clothespin in years. Amen. Until yesterday morning when we went to Edgefield and we was there uh, at the church that was given to the truth of God. Across the street there was a woman hanging out her clothes on a clothesline. Us brothers was talking about it. I said, well, we ain't seen that in years. Hmm. We want to hang you on the clothesline of Bible. <laughs> That's right. That the breeze of God may dry you out. <laughs> That's right. Eh? That's right. Amen. That's right. Come on, Williams. Wash you. What? Wash you. Praise. Wash. Everybody Amen. need washing. Oh, yes. <laughs> not just repenting and being baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Not that only. Only. For you got to have that. Yes, you got to have that to get your sins washed away. That's right. But now you need the Spirit of God yeah. through the Word of God. Yeah. To clean your mind. That's right. That's right. Clean your heart. Oh, yes. Clean your attitude. Mm. Clean up your character. That's right. Because it's stained, wrinkled, yeah. out of place. Out of place. And some of the stains that we have is because of our past experiences. That's right. Whenever anybody come to God, yeah. you come to God dirty. Dirty. That's right. That's right. Good You know, there's a saying that's not Bible that people have been saying and hearing for years. God don't do well in no unclean temper. You's a liar. That's a lie. God don't do well. And no unclean temple. Oh, no. God said it different. Yes, he did. When you're unclean, you're in darkness. Darkness. I believe the book of Kings here. That's right. God said he will dwell 
in the thick darkness. And when you are in the thick darkness, you are unclean, you are in sin. Well, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings. If I'm already dirty, how can I receive the Holy Ghost? That's right. No, the question is this. If you're already clean, why do you need the Holy Ghost? That's right. First Kings chapter 8 and at verse 12. If you clean, right. you don't need the Holy Ghost. That's right. The Holy Ghost come in that dirty man and in that dirty woman to clean them. To clean them. Don't you hear the Bible say you're clean to the word that I, that I speak you. unto you. Glory That's to right. God. Then look at what God say he will do. First Kings chapter 8 and at verse 12. First Kings 8 and 12 says. Then spake Solomon. Then spake Solomon. The Lord said. The Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God said it. That he would dwell. He would dwell. In thick darkness. In thick darkness. Thick darkness. If God say he will dwell there. That's don't right. tell me. No place in the Bible that says that uh, God won't dwell in no unclean temple. Ain't no, no Bible said that. No. You said that. That's right. Your pastor said it. Yeah. Glory to God, when I was on my knees trying for the Holy, Holy Ghost, there was an unclean boy down there. That's right. That's right. You received the Holy Ghost, you wasn't clean, you was dirty. Dirty. To prove you was dirty, you had dirty thoughts while you was on your knees. Lord. Go ahead. Am I right, I said? Go ahead. You was down there trying to get yourself together, asking God, please help me think right. Please That's get right. my heart right. That's Why? Right. You was dirty. Dirty. That's right. That's right. God stepped in. That's right. And even after you spoke in tongues, yeah. all that dirt still wasn't gone. That's right. That's right. That's why the word must be repetitiously preached. Preach. And the apostle said you're clean through, through the, the word, word which that I spoke unto you. you. Unto you. So the cleaning process is constant. 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 Hallelujah. Do it to God. Constant. That's right. Sometimes we think that former stain is gone. Yeah. Until we have a certain experience. That's right. Get around a certain group. And then the stain we thought was gone reappear. That's right. Showing you, you ain't all together, all together. right yet. Oh, yeah. So you got to put me back on the washing board. Washing. Hallelujah. That's right. Bring me back. That's right. Wash. Squirt me again. Oh, yes. Wash you. Sometimes the woman had to get that blouse or that shirt, scrub it, and then she presented it to herself. That's it. You see, before the Lord present to himself his glorious church, yeah. he first has to wash it. That's right. And then when it's clean like he wanted, he comes for his laundry yeah. and present it. Present it. Yes, sir. Are you getting me? That's right. You first got to get washed. Washed. Not on gentle cycle. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. Not on gentle cycle. Oh, no. That's why you love these false churches. Amen. They keep you on gentle cycle. Oh, yeah. Don't want to offend nobody. No. Don't want to hurt nobody. That's right. And that's why you go in the church dirty, come out dirty, die dirty. Die dirty. That's right. Got to have a hard, hard. rough cycle. Oh, yeah. Where the clothes can create friction. That's it. Up against God's word. That's right. You know, years ago, before they had washing machines, old Thomas would get a, that garment up against a big stone. Yeah. Needed something that's hard. Oh, yeah. When I was in Sierra Leone, West Africa, we went to the river, baptized quite a bit. And at the river, there was this 
massive stone. I mean, that thing was massive. That's right. The Jeep can only go but so far. And all the Jeeps and vans unloaded all the people. And we all had to go walk uphill, downhill, downhill. uphill, downhill. Yeah. It was so much hills until we had to hold on and slide down until we get to the river. Yeah. Got down to the river. Woman was down there with her little children. Big stone. Big stone. Doing her laundry. Amen. Rubbing it on the stone. First time I ever saw that. Rubbing it. Each piece on the stone. On the stone. Then she had to take it and slap it on the stone. Mm. Beat the stain out of it. Beat it. Sometime That's right. when you've been so used to being handled delicately, delicately. glory to God. That's right. Your sins just being passed over, uh -huh. yeah. never spoke against, never see yourself for who and what you really are. That's right. Down inside you may know, but you have never been confronted. That's right. That's good teaching, That's good. The scriptures is a mirror, yeah. and in that mirror we are spiritually disfigured. That's right. Scriptures show you the reality of self, the truth about self. The problem with us, some of us, not all, lack humility to admit how we are. That's right. Because even in our eyes, we know it's ugly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we got to accept the good along with the bad. For if any be a hearer of the word. Listen. In James chapter 1 and verse 23. If any be a hearer of the word. And not a doer. And not a doer. He is like unto a man beholding his natural he is face. He like unto a man holding his natural face into what? In a glass. In a glass, meaning into a mirror. For he beholdeth himself. He look at himself. And goeth his way. And he go on his way. And straightway forget straight it. Straightway he forget. What manner of man he was. He forget what he was looking at. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Now, the scriptures is a perfect law of liberty. That's, That's your it. mirror. That's it. Showing you how free you can be yeah. and how free God wants you to be in him. That's right. It's a perfect law. Perfect. It's a complete, thorough, flawless law that gives you perfect, infallible liberty That's or right. freedom in God. That's right. And the price of this freedom That's right. is death. Is death. What do you mean death, Pastor Dennis? I'm not talking about naturally dying. No. You have to die out from what you want. That's right. The price of godly freedom That's right. is death. death. And brother, that's a price that many is not willing to pay. Oh, yeah. The death I'm speaking of is self-surrender, self-sacrifice. Self yeah. The giving up and the offering up of one's will that's against God's will. That's right. And you may find yourself when you finally give in and give up saying like Jesus did, not my, not will, my will, but let I thine will be done. Be done. When right. you get to that point, you have agreed to total, ultimate okay. surrender. Oh, yeah. Now, let me take you back before you get baptized. Before you get baptized... When you're making up in your mind to repent and be baptized, yes. you have consented That's right. to die. That's right. Six chapter of the book of Romans. Romans chapter six. And Begin at verse one. At verse one. What shall we say then? Shall, shall we, we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? How shall we that are dead how? To sin. How shall we that are dead how? How shall we that are dead to sin? There's dead to sin and there's dead in sin. That's right. Two different categories of death. That's right. Dead to sin. They live any longer therein. If I'm dead to sin, I cease to perform it. Right. If I'm dead in sin, I'm not only performing it, I'm a student of it. A student of it. That's right. You want to be dead to, to sin. it. To sin. Not dead in it. In it. That's right. That's two different forms of death. That's right. 
When you come into the world, you're born in sin, dead. You're born dead and alive. And you have the quicken who yeah. was dead. You're born dead and alive. You have the quicken who was dead and trespass and in sins. And You're born sin. a dead child. That's right. A breathing dead child. Yeah. Formed in iniquity, fashion and lust. And when that child grow up, it performed the deeds of the dead. Mm. That's right. Yeah, be good. Are you getting this way? Wonderful, brother. Mm. When you're a smoker, you're the dead man. Dead man. Liar, you're the dead woman. Yeah. Drinker, you're a dead person. That's right. Gambling, you're a dead person. That's right. And God come back with scripture to resurrect you from the dead. From the dead. He kill you. <laughs> That's right. All over again. All over. To your first death brought you in sin. Yeah. Made you a child of the devil. the devil. And God wants you now to die for him. That's right. So he come take away your sin for pleasure. Yeah. And now you got to agree to die for him. For him. You're already dead for the devil. That's right. Now God wants you to agree to die for him. That's right. And to do that, he want to kill you. Kill you. But the Bible says you we killed, killed all the day long. All the day and for him to kill you, he had to send a mercenary to you. <laughs> a preacher. And make him a murderer. That's right. That's what I am. <laughs> I'm your friendly neighborhood murderer. <laughs> That's right. I come with Bible, using a sword to cut you, using a hammer to smash you, using an axe to dismantle you. Yeah. Amen. I'm Amen. a murderer. I'm murderer. I love murdering people. <laughs> Amen. I'm sent to do that. That's right. And if I want to go back with God, how long must I be killed? All the day long. <laughs> Bible says we are killed how long? All the day long. I don't care how old you are, Grandma. You got to die too. That's right. God ain't going to stop killing you because you got a king and bent over. Long as the Bible said, where there's life, there's hope. So she got to be killed while she's bent over. <laughs> That's right. Grandpa, he got to be, I don't care if he got a new set of dentures every five years. That's right. God going to kill him. going to kill him. God ain't going to look at, he's 105. His voice may be like the Godfather. He, his voice don't have that strength that it had when he was 25. Now it's all metal up like the Godfather. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what you got in mind to do yet? That's all right. That's all right. You got to die, Grandpa. That's right. As it is written. Hear this? Romans 8 and verse 36. Glory to God. As it is written. As it is written. For thy sake. Wait a minute. Mm. It's, it's for the best of who? For thy sake. Not for God's sake. That's, that's right. For the best of who? For thy sake. What must happen? We are killed. Wait, 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 wait. Well, what? We are killed. How often? All the day long. You better emphasize on that. For thy sake, we are killed. How often? All the day long. That's, that's right. Every time you look, Every time you there's look. something about you that's need true. to be put to death. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. And sometimes you think that thing, singular, or those things, plural, are non-existent in you. That's true. But there's a way that the devil has. Oh, yeah. Of resurrecting what you think That's right. might be dead. That's right. And that thing will come up in you, and you may not have seen it in That's five true. Or 10 years. Come on, boy, you fly this is why, one, you have to know God. Right. Two, you have to know Satan. Yeah. Three, you better know yourself. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, don't make no declarations that mm -hmm. God delivered you from anything, and yet you're struggling with that same thing, same thing. at the same time. That's right. If God delivered you from something, 
you ain't dealing with it. No. You just not dealing with it. That's right. If God healed you, then you are delivered from that problem. Yeah. But you can't be struggling with something and then say, I'm delivered. Right. Delivered is delivered. Mind, soul, body, and spirit. That's true deliverance. That's right. That's right. If I am delivered from being traumatized, true deliverance, healed from it, mentally and emotionally, physically and spiritually, that I can think of the trauma, but it has no effect yeah. because I'm delivered. That's right. I can think of the trauma and I feel nothing in here. No, no more anger, no more hurt, hallelujah, because I've been delivered. Right. My temple is delivered because when I think about it, I don't feel nothing that aroused my body to want to get even and act out the same way I did 10, 15, 20 years ago. That's right. But if I'm struggling, and yet with my mouth I profess deliverance, but yet when I think about it now, I'm all depressed. I'm all angry. I want to get even. Yeah. So now I want to get back at. That's right. So you ain't healed. Not healed. You ain't delivered. No. You're not yet saved from that. From that. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. That's Glory right. to God. Come on, Williams. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day all long. All the day long. We are accounted as sheep. We are. Ca- Wait a minute. God people is looked at as sheep. As sheep for the slaughter. Mm. We are looked at as sheep for the slaughter. So shut your mouth when you find yourself walking around saying, why I got to happen to me? Uh, <laughs> that's right. I didn't do nothing. I don't bother nobody. That's right. I mind my business. That's right. You sound like a naive That's fool. naive. Oh, yeah. Who says you got to bother somebody to have problems? That's right. I mind my business, but the devil don't mind his. No, he don't. You are God's business and you are Satan's business. That's right. If the Bible says we are sheep for the slaughter, who do sheep bother? Mm. Sheep just Nobody. out there grazing, looking at each other. Nah. That's right. Only one that's bothering me is the shepherd dog. Yeah. Running around barking, making all this noise. Yeah. Sheep just grazing. That's right. Uh, but what is that sheep made for? We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And what? Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Out of all what we encounter, mm. God can help us to conquer all of oh. it. Hallelujah. Through him that loved us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go back to the book of your figures. Everybody all right? Solomon, get this. Back in Ephesians 5 and verse 26. That he might sanctify. Sanctify. And cleanse it. That's what God wanted That's for right. us. With the washing of water by the word. So the word had to be preached rough, be tough, preached. because our stains is hard. Oh, yeah. We have taken matters in our own hands and have made the problems worse. That's true. That's true. Which caused false accusations. False indictments. Yeah. And things come out of our mouth oh, yeah. that should not come out. That's right. That may, one scripture says, don't cause your, don't let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. That's right. I don't care how angry you get, you better not curse God. That's right. And don't try to use God's title in your cuss words. Yeah. Why you got God what? <laughs> Never. That's why the Bible said, "Be ye angry and sin not." God don't is not against you being angry. Right. He just put a rule to your emotional mishap. That's right. Be angry. He give you permission. Yep. And sin not. 
But he implemented don't sin because he knows sin and anger run hand in hand. In, a, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 6. That's what? Suffer not thy mouth. Suffer not thy mouth. To cause to thy cause flesh. cause your flesh. To sin. That's right. The anger you get. You mm -hmm. cussing? Mm. You call God an MF? Yeah. Phew. Lord. You blaspheming? That's blaspheming. Because when you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost after you've been taught, you can't be forgiven. That's right. Only time you can be forgiven is when you've done it ignorantly. Ignorantly. That's right. That's right. Get me? Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. You see, peace doesn't manifest the full dynamics of a person. Peace shows you just one part. That's right. It is war, confrontation. That's right. That manifests the, the dynamics of an individual. Because confrontation and war show you the manifestation of loyalty or whether they will be loyal or abandon you. That's right. Whether they hang in there with you and help you or they would jump on a bandwagon and kill you or crucify you. Yeah. Anybody can say like in the hood, I got your back. Right. But when ain't nobody swinging. That's right. The real test whether you got that brother's back is when war break out. Yeah. Fight break out. Yeah. Otherwise than that, ain't nothing but a good word that sounds good. Right. Some say I got your back, and when it's time for war, the only thing about their back that you got is you see it running down the street. Amen. Are you listening? That's right. Like the message God gave us during the convention, who will stand up for me? Yeah. God wants us to stand, stand up for him. him, not just in a time of peace, but in a time of trouble. That's right. And a lot of folks are scared of adversity. Oh, yeah. Scared of it. Run from it. Run from it. Nobody making up in their mind to walk with God without paying the price. That's right. And please don't be surprised of the price you will have to pay. Have to pay. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Go back to the book of Ephesians quickly. Back in Ephesians 5 and verse 26. Follow me. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with... So God want to sanctify his people first. Sanctify. Sanctify like you separate your laundry. Yeah. Sanctify and cleanse, and it. cleanse it. With the washing, with of, the washing of water. Of water. By the word. By his word. That he might present it to himself. Ah. When them clothes is clean, right? That man and woman presents it to themselves. Look it over. That's right. They satisfied with it. Yeah. That's why the Lord didn't come back yet. Amen. He's not yet satisfied with the stage of the church. Right. That's why the church still being washed. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You see him in the book of Revelation when the letter was sent to the seven triggers of Asia. I have this against you. I have, this I have against that against you. I have that against you. I have the other against you. Yeah. That's right. Many people out of ignorance say, I'll be glad when the Lord come. Oh, yeah? What yeah. you going to get out of it? What you going to get out of it? Pastor Dennis, all my troubles will be over. How you know? Your trouble going to start. Amen. Because if you ain't ready to go back with God, brother, the worst trouble is getting started for you. Woe unto you. Hear this. Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. I want everybody to hear this well. Because it is common for people to say, oh, I'll be glad when his life is over. Yeah. Are you sure um, about that? Yeah. Are you sure about that? That's right. You'll be glad when this life is over. Yes, for who? For somebody else? Mm. Or for you? That's it. Listen at the Bible. Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. That's what? Woe unto you. Woe unto you. That desire the day of the Lord. That desire the Lord's day. To what end? What end? Is it for you? Is it for you? The day of the, the, Lord, day of the Lord is darkness and not light. The day of the Lord will be brutal. That's right. I say, but I thought the day of the Lord will be happy. We'll be happy to go back with the Lord. Yeah, if you make it. <laughs> if you make it. But remember, 
You can't have a spot. A spot. That's right. That's right. Not one spot. That's right. Help us, Lord. Your thoughts got to be like Jesus, and the Holy Ghost think of no evil. No evil. That is why you don't have time to look at the failures of nobody but your own. That's right. Stay away from cliques. Yeah. It shows you nothing but an immature church going fool. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. When the word of God is preached, pay attention so you don't fall asleep like Brian, like Byron. He woke up holding his thumbs up. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes folk fall asleep in church, they always say the devil did it. No, look, you're just tired. That's, That's all. Right. That's it. I remember year, years ago, I was in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, years long before we had a church down there. I was tired, brother. In the evening session, I was sitting back, and they were having praise service, and I was knocked out. <laughs> And the deacon, he's passed away now, Deacon Edward. I didn't even hear when he announced me. <laughs> I didn't hear nothing. I was in that chair, gone. The only thing that woke me up, he kept saying, thank God, Pastor Jim. <laughs> thank God. I woke up, I was like, hmm? <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, it's, my, it's time for me. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Amen. you get what I'm doing. I know sometimes you need a snooze. Right. But right now, you got to get this in you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. You got to get this in you. Oh, yes. Serving God is the most difficult thing difficult. to do. Yeah. It is not like these false prophets make it like it's so jolly Joe all the time. No you way. walking on a corner gr grinning, giving out tracks and flyers like you with the Girl Scouts. <laughs> That's right. That's right. A life time of denial Nine. of self-denial mm. is a lifetime of pain. That's right. Because when you tell the truth huh. there are things oh, yes. plural that you just want to do. That's right. There are places you just want to go yeah. there are people yeah. you just want to see, to see. there are things yeah. you just want to hear, to hear. Yeah. That's right. That's right. are you listening to the old man that's right these old self-righteous Johnny come lately false prophets that try to make it like uh, they have no desire to do nothing. They up there with Jesus. My Lord. And ain't none of these frauds up there with Jesus. <laughs> no way. None of them. None of them. None of them. There's places I would like to go. Hmm. Where, Pastor Jenny? None of your business. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I would like to go to a nice mellow jazz club. You hear me talk about it? Yeah. Hey Amen. I know how to play jazz. is is in my fingers. <laughs> it isn't a style, rhythm, music that I don't know how to play. Never took a lesson in my life. It just. When I came up, I came up listening to the old jazz musicians, the Art Tatums, the Oscar Peterson, the Earl Garners. I understood rhythm and coordination. I didn't need a drummer to play. Wow. I would sit in the organ and play the rhythm and knew how to make my organ sound like drums and chords at the same time with my hands. Mm. I didn't just use my hands. I had my whole floorboard. I ran my bass line from floorboards, not just with toes, but heels and toes and heels and toes and all up and down. Mm. See, one of the things about the benefits of false church, it taught you how to hypocrite. 
and you've done it very good. So I always find that the mellow appearance of a jazz club that had that 1930s and 1940s vibe. Someone standing at a vintage mic singing, sounding like Billie Holiday or Ella Fitzgerald. I don't want to hear the one rap. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Your mouth sound like a machine gun. I don't want to hear that. I found it appealing when I was coming up to listen to men who sound like the Ink Spots mm. and the Mills Brothers. You young folks don't know nothing about that. That was extreme harmony. Oh, yes. A band come in town with a rhythm like the Duke and the Count. Mm. But I can't. <laughs> See, a lot of preachers won't even admit there are things they want to do. That's right. They can say, well, the only thing I would like to do is live holy and go back with Jesus. Liar! 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 <laughs> Stop lying. Until you are pronounced dead, dead in Christ and everything about you is dead, there's something in you still alive. Even Paul admitted that I'm not yet apprehended. That's right. Didn't he say so? That's right. Paul admitted about himself until he said, in me dwelleth no good thing. Brethren, I count not And this myself. man was an apostle. That's right. And if he was that honest about himself, Self. why you got to lie to yourself about yourself? And the reason why many of you do it, you're too busy worrying about how you look in the eyes of others, and you're not concerned how you look in the eyes of God. That's right. That's right. Man, if I'm not up to something, I'm just not up to it. Pray for me. That's the attitude that you should be one towards the other and get your foot off the brother's neck and yet you ain't up there. Put your foot on your own neck. That's right. That's the right. book says mourn That's with right. them. That mourn. That mourn. Yes. Rejoice with them. That, that rejoice. rejoice. That if your brother or your sister fall, don't get happy. You wouldn't like it if someone got happy if you fell. That's right. You want somebody to run up under you and pray and fast? Then look not every man on his own thing, but on the things of others. The things of others. Are you listening? That's right. What did he say? Back in Ephesians 5 and Everybody verse all right? 6. Paul That's said, I'm not yet apprehended. That's right. He had things to come up to. That's right. Not as though I had listen, already listen to give chapter and verse for this. Philippians chapter 3 and at verse 12. Listen. Not as not though as though I had already I attained. Have already attained. Hold it. Paul's telling you, it's not like I already got my crown. That's right. I haven't already made it. That's right. This is the man that God appeared to. Spoke from heaven with that excellent voice. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. Rise up, standing on thine feet. Go through the street that is called straight. It shall be told thee. What thou oughtest to do? What to do? A certain disciple by the name of Ananias come. Let Saul know how the Lord sent me to you. Lay hands on him that may receive his sight. Paul got baptized. Uh -huh. See the baptism of the Holy Ghost went straightway and preaching Jesus was the Christ. It was one of the greatest powerful, dynamic, authoritative apostles that walk earth. Oh, yeah. Until he dared angels to come down to contradict them. That's right. And dared men on earth to contradict them. That's right. That's some authority. That's, That's some power. Oh, yeah. And that same man by the Holy Ghost says what? Not as though I had already Not attained. Not as though I've already made it. Either were already perfect. Don't even look at me as I already was complete. But I follow after. I follow. I got to follow what I'm preaching just like you do. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Did you hear this? That's right. So take your time and work on you. That's it. Leave others alone. That's right. Do you. You'll be working overtime. You're working overtime. Don't worry about fighting with other churches. Fight with you. That's right. Leave the fighting to the word of God. That's right. 
All right, let's go back to Ephesians now. Back in Ephesians 5, still in verse 26. Come on, real quick. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the water. Oh, he wanted to sanctify his sanctify. people. Sanctify. Set them apart. That's it. Cleanse them. Cleanse it. With the washing of the water. By the word. Thank God by the word. That he might present it to himself. Now, it's time for presentation. That's it. When the thing is clean, you present it. When the Lord come, hmm. he got the church right where he wanted. That's right. He haven't came yet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Because that means if he came right now. My Lord, my Lord. Right now. What time is it, brother? 207? If he came right now at exactly 207, who here right now can honestly say they life it's so right, so right, that they can be presented up to Christ, Christ. without one problem. Lord help us. Are you listening? My Lord. You got to strive to get there. That's right. Because he ain't changing his rules. No. God presented unto himself a glorious church not having, not having a spot. spot. Not one. Not having spot. That's why God be preaching against spots so hard. Yeah. Mm. For the sanctification and the cleanliness of the soul. Get your eyes off everybody in church. If you come That's to church right. to see who's there, stay home and stop being a fool. That's right. Like you don't have nothing else to do with your time. You's a fool. That's a fool. You so worried about who's at church? Why aren't you there? That's right. And when you get mad at me saying this, because you know you're guilty. Yeah. God have no pleasures in fools. That's right. Hear this. Ephesians 5 at verse 27. What is it? That he might present it to himself. That he may present it to himself. A glorious church. A glorious church. Not, not having not spot. having a spot. Or wrinkle. Nothing out of place. That's right. What else? Or any such thing. But that it should be apostolic, Methodist, or Presbyterian, or Lutheran. But that it should be holy. What's the matter? <laughs> it's, it's, it's so obvious, Pastor. It should be holy. God said it should be what? It should be holy. What you say, viewers? That's it. You better hear what you say. What you say. Amen. Holy. Holy. God it. said for you to be holy, it's best for you to shut your mouth and be it. Amen. Amen. Don't look at Pastor Jenny. He's trying to be something new. <laughs> no. Listen, Jack, Gino wouldn't want to be holy. No. Gino would just want to be G. <laughs> That's it. Just be G and go back with Jesus. <laughs> if I can go back with Jesus and not be holy, I'm cool. I'm cool too, Pastor. You cool, right? Oh, yes. I ain't got to look at him read. He ain't got to look at me <laughs> preach. I ain't got to look at you. I ain't got to look at you. All these faces and, mm, and shaking your head. And, mm, all bad. Some things we say, you roll your eyes. Mm, all type of face, lips all turned up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay you no mind. No mind. <laughs> Are you listening? That's right. But God said be holy. That it should be holy. He never said be anything else. So anybody that's here that's anything else, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, non-denominational, Pentecostal, Christian scientists. That's right. Apostolic, Mormon, Muslim, 5%er, 2%ers, no percenters. Amen. Amen. God don't give two cents about none of it. No. God made it plain. He said what you should be. That it should be holy. With what? And without blemish. Amen. Hmm. Oh, without what? Without blemish. What time do you got to look at anybody? What time do you Hello? Some of you got blemishes right while you're sitting here. Your mind thought That's about right. him. Your mind thought about her. That's right. Amen. Sister That's walked right. by you, her hip just brushed up against your thigh. You ain't normal the rest of the day. Not normal. <laughs> <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. Ah. Amen. 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 Glory to the Father. <laughs> Glory to God. 
Come on, Williams. But that it should be holy. That it should be holy. And without blemish. And without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Now, this is the type of church that God wants. Yeah. This is the most difficult, strictest, solid, firm church that ever was. That's right. Ever will be. That's right. And this is the church that he died for, and this is the church that he coming back for. That's right. He being God, he know he don't even have to settle for anything less. He's not going to negotiate. He's not going to bargain. We are the ones that got to surrender. That's it. How many here feel like surrendering? Raise your hand. You feel like surrendering? Brother say he feel like surrender. Good. I feel like it sometimes. Sometimes. I don't feel like it all the time. No way. I'm telling you straight up. That's right. I don't feel like it sometimes. I don't. I guess don't feel like it all the time. I guess don't. Only thing that got me buckling down is because hell's behind me in it. <laughs> Guy looked down and <laughs> get in mind you ain't gonna surrender something all of a sudden. <laughs> Am I right, Chuck? That's right. You, got, you, you start surrendering, start pulling off. I'm pulling off. Sometime what you pull off, yeah. you put back on. Oh yeah. This is why it is necessary yeah. of the constant hammering of the word upon self. That's right. Because we find ourselves pulling off and then put it back on. Back on. So we're back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And that's exhausting. Oh yeah. In God you want to be one way. Pull it off. Keep it off. Keep it off. That's right. What of God says what? That he might present it to himself. A present it. I, I want present to be it. in that presentation. Present it. And to be in that presentation, mm. you can't be arrogant, self-righteous, self-centered. You got to be humble. Humble. Stop trying to prove to others that you changed or are changing. That's right. The one you proven it to, who's to say they're going to accept what you claim? Yeah. And then you're so busy trying to convince him and convince her, I'm changing, I'm changing. Because there's some folk, I don't care, if you've done something 20 years ago, that is stamped in their head, That's and right. to them, you're still the same 20-year-ago devil. So what you do, you spend your days yeah. and years trying to prove to him or her what you are not. That's right. And you're so focused on him, and you're so focused on her, you lost focus on God. Yeah. That's right. Lose sight on everybody. That's right. And establish a true relationship between you and God. Yeah. Because there ain't nobody coming back for you but the Lord. That's all. That's right. I ain't coming back for you. No. At all. <laughs> Williams ain't coming back for you. Oh, no. He come back for you, he ain't taking you. Nope. If he could come back, he ain't taking you. <laughs> Will you come back and look at you? <laughs> Just like he laughing now. If he came on the cloud, he'd oh probably my. up there laughing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> leave you right, leave you right here. Right here. <laughs> Think of the benefits of God. Yeah. All your tears is wiped away. Yes. What do you mean? Cause and effect. What caused those tears? That's removed. So there is no pain, no emotional anguish, no mental anguish. In fact, this life 
it'd be as if it never existed. Never existed. Because there's nothing in this life you will remember. That's right. Is that Bible? Certainly it Book is. Book of Isaiah chapter 65 and at verse 16. Isaiah 65, 16 says. That he who blesseth himself in the earth. He what? He, that he who blesseth himself in the earth yes. shall bless himself in the God of truth. Yes. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Uh -huh. Because the former troubles, the former troubles are forgotten. Are forgotten. And because they are hid from mine eyes. And what? For behold, I create new heavens. I give you a new heaven. And a new earth. And new earth. And the former shall not be the remembered. The former. This is the former. That's right. Will not be remembered, nor nor come into mind. It won't even come to your mind. That's right. You don't remember none of your pain, what you went through, what somebody done to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All that spot. Mm. You don't remember the pain you suffered as a child, the abuse, the anguish. Won't well, remember the man that murdered your father, murdered your mother. You won't remember it. Won't remember it. The Bible speaks plain. And the former shall not be remembered. The former will not be remembered. Nor, nor come into mind. That's something. Nobody can fix eternity up like God. My like God. That's why He's gonna change our vowed body. That's right. That it might be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Glorious. If, if he don't change us, then our suffering will go from here temporarily to there eternal. That's right. Who wants to remember the anguish they dealt with here throughout eternity? eternity. That's painful. Oh, yeah. That's misery. Oh, yeah. Right. Glory to God. For behold, I create new heavens. You hear? I create new heavens. New heavens. And a new earth. And a new earth. And the former shall not be the remembered. Former. Nothing right here. Mm. Was you remember? Nor come into mind. It won't even come to your mind. But be ye glad. Be what? Be ye glad. Be happy. And rejoice. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. And rejoice. But be ye glad and rejoice forever, forever. In, in that which I create. And that which God created. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing. Do you hear that? I create Jerusalem a rejoicing. There the city lie at four square. The breadth, the height, the length thereof. Hallelujah. One part is 144 cubits, another part is 12,000 furlongs. There are 12 foundations. With the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Help me, Lord. Mm. That city, the eternal Jerusalem. Eternal Jerusalem. Never was enlarged. That's right. Never went through no renovations to be enlarged. We we'll show you hell, though, yes. hath enlarged herself. Herself. There's more loss. Oh, yes. In fact, I believe in the book of Ecclesiastes or the book of the wisdom of Solomon. Yes. Talking about uh, this earth and only a few. Few. That's a few going to be saved. That's right. Look at the example in the days of Noah. Out of all them people in the world, only eight. City of Solomon and Gomorrah, only Lot and his family. As it was in Noah's day, so shall it be when the Son of Man come. Man come. People that are rejecting the word of God by the thousand to fight it against the word of God. All right. You still go meet the Lord even if you believe he does not exist. That's right. You may not believe the sunshine. Who cares? The sun still going to shine in the midst of your unbelief. In 2 Esther chapter 8 and at verse 1. All right. And he answered me saying, the most high. The most high. Hath made this world for many. made this world for many. But the world to come. But the world to come. For few. Just for a few. Just for a few. That's right. Think of it. This world is for many. For many. You that have not repented of your sins and wasn't sorry for being a child of the devil. Yeah. Drinking and gambling and partying, living together, not married, shacking up. Smoking your weed and taking your crack, your whiskey, your beer, your Budweiser. 
Got your 38 in your car and your 45. And got your little liquor canteen in your back pocket in church. <laughs> That's right. In the church. Got your artificial Cuban cigars <laughs> and your armrests of your car. Got a bar in your house. Supposed to be a Christian with a bar. Got Jack Daniels and vodka and bourbon and gin. Yeah. Having your card party in your house. All your drunken buddies. <laughs> That's right. Sitting there playing cards, smoking cigarettes, until your fingertips is all brown from the blunt. Yeah. Lips all burnt from the bottle of liquor. Yeah. Amen. Grandma all drunk with Grandma. liquor. She don't want a glass. She want the whole bar. Give me the bar. That's right. Old lipstick smudged all over her face and fake eyelashes hanging off her eyes. <laughs> That's right. Fall right down in a glass of wine. Yeah. They're like a roaches in the glass. And it's her eyelashes. <laughs> That's right. Get mad much as you want. Oh, yeah. You're going to see Jesus. I'm see him. You ain't got to believe in them. All right. That, 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 that is your privilege. That's your privilege. The sun don't stop setting and the moon don't stop shining. That's right. Because you don't believe. You don't believe. God don't stop being God, viewer. Yeah. And you that are here because you don't believe. Don't believe it. Repent of your sins and pack up and come out of every man-made religion on the planet. That's right. And when it's not holy... It's man-made. That's it. Call it what you want. I don't care how many people go to it, how many celebrities are in it. Who no. cares? No. If God say be holy be and you're holy. something else, you're of the devil. That's it. Who? You and your wife and your mama. <laughs> That's right. Your mama is of the devil. Your mama. daddy. Slap happy grandpappy and your pastor. Oh, yeah. And you. That's right. You got to be holy. Got to be holy. What is your other option? Go to hell. Go to hell. Holiness or hell? That's it. You don't like to hear it like that, viewer. I know you don't. That's why you turn to Benny Hinn. <laughs> that's right. That's right. E.D. Snakes. And that's why you watch your old raggedy preacher. Hmm. Some of you watching now, you came in from your church, running around and hobbling with your outdated Jerry Curl. Putting grease all on the walls and on the pews. <laughs> leaving big wet stains. <laughs> Glory to God. That's right. Collar of your jacket all wet like all you got wet. a private thunderstorm. That's right. <laughs> Glory to God. Get me what I'm telling you here. That's right. What did he say, William? Back in Ephesians 5 and verse 27. <laughs> that he might present it to himself. He may present it to, to himself. himself. A glorious church. My secretary was telling me that a, a viewer called in. You know, one of them overzealous folk. I got a question to ask Pastor Jennings. She said, uh, can I relate it to him? Yeah, I want to know why is it that the people in service, they laugh when he preached. You got to be serious. <laughs> My Lord. Who's more serious than God? And the Bible said God laughed yeah, at, at the calamity. calamity. You over-righteous infidel. <laughs> that's right. We laugh because we're having a good time. That's, that's right. That's why we laugh. That's right. Thank God we got something to laugh and rejoice yeah. about. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I meet these over-righteous over -righteous. people that feel as though it's a sin to laugh, it's a sin to sneeze. Mm. over -zellious. My Lord, my Lord. Never smile at nothing. They look like a wildebeest cousin. Never smile. <laughs> Always quoting Bible for everything. That's right. over -zellious. over -zellious. Brother, how you doing? The Lord is coming. Well, you want to get something to eat? Well, nobody know the day or the hour. Nobody asked you about the day or the hour. I just wanted to know that you want to eat. Lord help us. Car breakdown. Brother, can I help you? The devil working on my engine. No, your engine just fell. That's right. 
Blame the devil for everything. Everything. Brother, what's that on you? Man, the devil spilled coffee on me. You spilled it. <laughs> it was too hot. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. They got a zeal. That's the way some of us are. Oh, yeah. Oh, over righteous, over zeal, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm glad God made me a very down-to-earth preacher. Very down-to-earth preacher. Amen. Amen. Only thing make me above you is the word of God. Otherwise than that, I say just like the apostle. That's I'm right. a man just like you. That's it. That's it. I don't feel as though I'm up there in the clouds. Not at all. That's I'm right. right here. When I wake up and look around, mm, I'm right here. That's right. I don't see a cloud nowhere around. Are you listening? Amen. Give me Acts 238. Let's bring it home, Williams. Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, Augusta. Amen. You Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterian and Lutheran and Catholics that are visiting and Pentecostals and apples with Stalics mm. and Lutherans and Christian scientists and Mormon and Muslims and uh, five percenters and Hebrew Israelites, whatever you are. Whatever you are. There's one thing you got to obey here. That's right. And you got this to do. That's right. I don't care about the status in life. The Bible speaks plain here. Then Peter said unto them, repent. God wants you to be sorry for your sins. That's it. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you. Oh, what? In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission this of sins. This is how you get your sins washed away. You bow your head and raise your hands. You're not saved. No more than a no pig more. can tap dance. That's right. You ain't going to find no tap dancing pig. No, you won't. Who marry a cow <laughs> and start an oint church. Amen. Not at all. Not at all. Some folks say, where he come up with these things? I want to make it so difficult for you. That's that right. That you got to come back to the Bible. That's right. Repent and be baptized every one of you. How much? Every one of you. I see you that are here. That's right. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for what? For the remission of sins. What did the Lord promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's being born of the water and of the Spirit. That's it. When you're born of the water, you repent of your sins, you're baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. When you're born of the Spirit, you fill up the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues that the Spirit gave utterance like the day on the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem. At Jerusalem. Jesus made it plain. He said, upon this rock I build my Church. My church. One church is one people, and everybody got to come into church by the same way. That's right. Water and spirit. Water and spirit. Anybody want to be right with God and be baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, like the Bible says, stand on your feet if you want it today. Amen. Glory to God. All of you that are standing, go to the back there. All of you that are standing, go to the back. All you that are standing, go right to the back. Amen. Preacher, you going to? All right. Amen. Amen. Bible says the priest Wonderful. was obedient to the faith. This is a strong gospel. Yes, it is. Come out of your churches and remember, Hallelujah. don't go back in. And we have a local church here where you can attend and pack it out. Yeah. 3441. Milledgeville Road here in Augusta, Georgia. Wonderful. Services every Sunday at 10:30 uh, starts, and then four o'clock, and then six o'clock on Wednesday. We'll be back this evening. We'll be back here, right? Yes, right back uh, we'll here. be right here. We'll be back here this evening. Service begin at five o'clock. Come on back. Come on back and get some more grub. Some more. Get your soul right with God. Invite your pastor. Amen. So he and his entire congregation can go down in water. Hallelujah. All right, let us all stand. Brother William, close us out in prayer. Father God, we do come to you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you once again for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for the teaching, my God, and preaching that allows us to have a chance at eternal salvation. We thank you, Father God, for the man of God and for the word yes, that you Lord. put in his mouth. Thank you. My God, we thank you for the souls that desire to repent Amen. and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. God. Look down upon each one of us, O oh God, and encourage Hallelujah. our hearts. Encourage our minds not only to be hearers of thine word, 
but bless us to be doers also. Help us to overcome every obstacle, every problem. My God, that's in our lives. We know, God, that thou canst do what we're not able to do. My God, strengthen us, bless us, and help us by your spirit and by your power, O God. Encourage every soul, every heart, every mind. Remember those that's waiting on the altar. Hallelujah for the Holy Ghost. Bless them, O God, that they may be filled with thine divine spirit. My God, bless those that are sick and give them divine healing according to your good will and your purpose. Remember the pastor, God. Continue to strengthen his heart. Help him, O God. Continue to stand by him, my God, and be with him. Continue to thunder the gospel out of him. Hallelujah. My God, by your spirit and by your power. Now we thank you, Father God, for all things thus far. My God, we do pray and ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.